Tonight, our Chris Blatchford has part three of his special look at illegal street racing here in the Southland. Chris? Well, many blame the street racers for creating their own problems, but the racers see it differently. They say there is no nearby legal raceway and they are forced to hit the streets. Tonight, Fox Undercover gives you an inside look at the consequences, and it isn't pretty. It's a cold Friday night in the San Fernando Valley. The 270 Chevelles warm up the street. It is illegal, and they know it. The police have a point we shouldn't be racing on the streets. His name is Hank, and he races anyway. And just like any other race night, the police chase Hank and his buddies away. Cops say area residents constantly complain about the street racers. It'd be a different story if this was an empty lot, but there's constant traffic coming through here. This is a bomb waiting to explode down here. Yeah, this is where you get the pull. And for Hank, it explodes about 10 minutes later. Just a few blocks away, he wraps his Chevelle around a pole. He's lucky that uh, he's still alive. They didn't touch until no, this no one hit the pole. Well, police say this youth and Hank collided during a drag race. A battered Hank goes off in an ambulance, but survives. And words he spoke earlier are almost haunting. We like cars. We can't stop. We need a place. Please give us a place to race. <laughs> At race spots throughout Southern California, it is a plea you hear over and over again. Here in Ontario. If they had a racetrack, you know, people would go to the racetracks instead of coming out here. In Compton. We need a, we need a, we need a legal track because we don't like breaking the law. We respect the law. Right, fellas? That's right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. In Orange County. If we can get tracks opened up, it'd stop a lot of the street racing. But today, nothing seems to stop the street racers who take over the blacktop at night like they own it. It's dangerous, okay? 38-year-old Van Anderson. Some called him king of the racers as his five fast cars ruled the streets. Now his castle is here at Soledad Penitentiary for his role in a race-related accident that killed a good friend. In my case, where, like, they showed a videotape, it was a freak accident. We it was a race hundreds came to see. She was talking Anderson's forward. hot Vega against a turbocharged VW, but it never came off. Everything happened real quick, okay? Engine trouble caused the VW to drop out, and as Anderson made a pass down the Compton Street, the VW pulled out in front of him. What made him cross that street? I don't know. My car tried to dodge and nicked him and spun him around and I guess a centrifugal force threw him out the car, you know, and uh, he broke his neck. Vince Darnell Harry was dead at the scene. He was only 27 years old. Anything can happen on those streets at any given time. Just last month, another veteran street racer mangled his Corvette while racing down Hauser in south central Los Angeles in broad daylight. Friends and family couldn't believe it happened. And 46-year-old Jimmy the Smog Man Rhodes didn't live to tell about it. Big Willie Robinson was his friend. Bought a brand new 92 ZR1 Corvette, you know, and because of no track, he out testing his car. Jimmy the Smog Man was wiped out. Street racers know all the possibilities. There's guys getting killed out there, you know, because the cars are not quite right for the street and they go incredibly fast and they lose it, and, you know, it's a bad deal. And a car could pull out in front of you, cut in front of you, cut you off, and either you can slam into the guy that you're racing or you can slam into that car that cuts you off. And there are other violence problems that sometimes follow the racers. Here in Compton, a man in the crowd unexplainably starts blasting the air with a shotgun. Luckily, no one is hurt. Here in the valley, an out-of-control pickup truck nearly crashes into spectators. No one seems to know who he is or why he is doing it. And in Silmar, at this Saturday night race spot, as day breaks, police find the body of 20-year-old Anthony Wong laying in the street. Investigators discover he was shot by hooded gang members who fired into a race crowd. 
All of these are risks that weigh heavily on the street racer. It sucks. It's a bummer. It's a bummer. Look what we got to do. And at this Compton hangout, we talked with racers about the need for a legal racetrack. It's a desperate need for a place to take everybody off the streets. And you could see the frustration on all sides as highway patrolman J.D. Taylor joined our conversation. You're out here causing a lot of problems on the street. Okay, we could be, but what I'm saying, we could be causing a lot Where more problems. Where else can you come? There's nobody here drinking. There's nobody here doing drugs. This is our fun. This is our fun. All that's going to happen, we keep getting people killed out here, is all of a sudden, we're just going to move in, we'll write tickets, we'll impound everybody's car. You know, I would like to see, really, I would like to see the Highway Patrol support us about hey. getting the track open. There you go. You're not going to stop people from racing. Wouldn't you like this whole cat and mouse game to stop? I would love to, to eliminate stop? this thing, yes. Officer Taylor leaves us with these graphic photos to drive home his main point. Several weeks ago, 23-year-old Bruce Kamamura was killed while making a U-turn on a Compton street. A racer going 100 miles per hour hit him broadside. And just a few days later, racers were back here at the same spot. People think it's dangerous. Could be if you don't take necessary precautions, but more or less it's a safe sport. Everyone's careful. But no one knows more how dangerous on. illegal street racing can be than Big Willie. So this is our old starting area. Willie has spent eight years trying to reopen a legal drag strip here at Terminal Island. I feel real bad because there's been many funerals. We need to do something now. It was shut down in 1984. Willie calls it a crisis. We're too big for the public streets and our machines are too fast for the public streets. This legal raceway in Irwindale was shut down in 1977. Six other tracks have also been shut down. The only legal raceway left in L.A. County is in Palmdale. But you can see, they just buried us. <laughs> Overlooking the old Terminal Island Raceway, Big Willie says the City Harbor Department keeps stonewalling. Traffic cone is still out here, but we're not. Stonewalling his efforts to give people a place to race. If I only can get the Harbor Department to care, then we can solve some of the problems. For several months, Fox Undercover has been trying to get some definitive comment from the Harbor Department. It is clear they hold at least one option to getting some of the illegal racing off the streets. But Harbor boss Izuniel Burtz has repeatedly refused to do an on-camera interview with Fox Undercover. Meanwhile, chances to put the brakes on some illegal street racing are speeding away. And as the one gentleman pointed out, lives are being lost as those chances are going away. Thanks, Chris.